morning. That's a half decent angle. Let's go with that. Remarkably easy when you have a tripod that works. Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. How's it going? Hope you're doing very well. Um, I feel like it's disguised by my hair right now, but if I just uh, give you a little flash of the outfit of the day today, paint splattered overalls, you know what time it is. If you've been a friend of mine for a while, you'll know that this outfit can only mean one thing, and that's me spontaneously deciding to start another DIY project today. Yes, despite the fact there's already two currently ongoing that I've kind of mildly lost interest in along the way and I'm still yet to finish. But in my mind, why finish one project in a nice, well-rounded, satisfying way when you can just lose interest and start something else? So today is a DIY day, officially. I'm hoping, I'm daring to dream that this is a one day project. Um, but I've thought that many, many times before, how naive I am. So I'm sure I'll get some kind of nightmare horror realisation only minutes into this project. But before we get stuck in, before I give you a rundown of what we're up to today, first things first, let's make a coffee. And I'm also going to have some breakfast too, because if there is one thing I've learned in my horrible, haphazard, slapdash attempts at any kind of DIY, it's to make sure you've eaten first because otherwise you turn into a horrible Jekyll and Hyde hangry version of yourself um, before you've even picked up a paintbrush. <laughs> Why move anything when you just push it all at once? Okay, I'm fed, I'm caffeinated, the hair is back. It's time to get this show on the road. So I suppose I better give you a little rundown of what I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do today. Is this a task that I know absolutely nothing about and have never attempted before? Yes, yes it is. If you're kind of vaguely familiar already with our little house, you will know that this is our living room. And in our living room, we have this wall right over here. Uh, we have a mirror above here, and then this is the fireplace. And that is my target for today. If I take a little seat here, we can have the victim in the background while I talk you through it. So this right here is a job that I have been meaning to do for so long now. I genuinely think this is probably one of the first things that I thought to myself when we moved into this house that would be a nice little doable job. And that is tiling the inside of this fireplace. I reckon I honestly thought about that the first week that we moved in, thought they would make it much neater, much prettier, a nice little feature. Uh, but for one reason or another, I've just never got round to it. It's just fallen down the list again and again and again. I think it feels a little bit messy, a little bit fiddly, a little bit tricky. We're kind of at a point with the house where we've done all the kind of really major changes that we wanted to make, but we're on to the little bits now that we kind of skipped right back at the beginning. And because we probably aren't going to be in a position to leave this house anytime soon with the market the way that it is and mortgages the way that they are these days, um, I'm trying to think of little ways that we can kind of upgrade how the house feels slightly. I'm gonna try and focus on, on those little detail type projects a bit more. Um, and hopefully it'll feel like each room has a little bit of a glow up as we go along. And I feel like the fireplace is gonna be an example of that. If I manage to do this, I'm saying that very confidently like this is gonna go well. But as I said, have I ever tiled a thing in my life? No, sir. So this is the little space as it's looking right now. We've got some old laminate floor still in there, which I'm going to lift up. We've got these, if I brighten this up slightly, just so you can see inside a bit better, hopefully. There we go. We've got the three black sides here, which are just kind of very scruffily painted. Um, I'm planning to tile all of that. Because this is a non-working fireplace and there's no actual kind of fire installed in there, I'm pretty much free to use whatever I want because I don't have to worry about things like, you know, fire safety. There's nothing in there. The more I hunted, the more I kind of realized that I wasn't finding anything that I absolutely loved. And the more I also realized that we're kind of planning on changing up this room a little bit. I also mentioned in a previous video, we're thinking about getting some new kind of carpentry done on this side for this alcove and then getting the same carpentry over here to match. And I'm undecided about those colors as of yet. Also got to bear in mind the fact that we have quite a bold green sofa over here. So my kind of color options and style options, I was a little bit confused about what to go for. But then I had a little bit of a brainwave and suddenly remembered that we actually had two boxes of tiles sitting pretty, very much neglected and in need of a use in the shed. And those tiles just so happened to be the ones that we used 
in the kitchen. So I'm actually going to use these exact same tiles that we've got as our little kitchen splash back here. These kind of pearlescent, very, very pale, pinky, chalky white kind of colour. I'm going to use those. I bought these in from the shed the other day just so that I could see kind of how they looked in the fireplace itself. These are them. They're Zellige tiles. Um, I got them from this place, Mosaic Factory. <laughs> the boxes are so grubby. They've been in the shed for so long since we got the kitchen done, obviously. Um, and here we go. We've got boxes and boxes of these tiles. And I just thought it would be such a waste to buy new ones when these are so lovely. They look like tiny little sandwiches in here. Welcome to our setup for the next however many hours this is gonna inevitably end up taking me. I feel slightly like a teacher in front of a blackboard. Watch how magic pencil writes it. But I'm gonna be honest, we're off to a lazy start already because I couldn't be bothered to get the proper dust sheet out of the shed. It is inevitably covered in so many spiders and I'm picking my battles wisely today. This is enough of a battle. I'm not ready for spider warfare. When the guys fitted the new wooden floor, which you can see poking underneath the tea towels here, um, they left this in because I wasn't entirely sure what we were going to do with this fireplace. I literally hadn't given it a second thought. And that was literally four years ago. And here we are. I'm finally doing something with it. Although, what am I actually going to find under here? Am I best to leave this down as a flat base, do we think? Because I'm going to put tile trim along the bottom. Maybe I'm best to leave it as a completely flat base. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Interestingly, though, I do actually think this would lift with a bit of elbow grease. But... I think there's going to be a gap. Mm, I don't know what to do. If I lift it, there's no going back, is there? Oh, jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like I might be about to open the hell mouth. Oh my god, what is under there? Well, I've just uncovered chunks of wood. No, right, that's staying down. I imagine they probably put the laminate through it for a reason. So I'm gonna just trust whoever came before me. I'm gonna trust those who came before me <laughs> to have had a fraction more knowledge than I do right now. I've just been taking a little bit of time to figure out in my brain the order of play, like what I actually need to do <laughs> in this process rather than just barrel in and do it one thing at a time and trying to figure out the timeline of jobs in my brain but i just have to record this bit i'm just doing like a little trial run of the tile cutter which i'll show you once i've done this i feel like i just need to record this because i have beyond less than any idea of what i'm remotely doing here so i just wanted to record this moment really while i try and figure out Ooh, what a horrible noise I did it. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's half a time. I hope it doesn't surprise me like that every single time because I'm not sure my heart's going to be able to cope. But does that fit? Oh my God, it fits. Well, sort of. The moment I start to actually try and do these things, I realise that I should have given them more thought than I actually have. I really have to admire my chutzpah, but I absolutely despair of every other element of my personality. <laughs> so I've just taken some time to fill in this whole bottom bit. I cut every tile that I needed to, and now I've laid them out in here in order, ready to now move in to this fireplace. So I'm now going to dive in with this stuff. The adhesive that I picked up, I just grabbed all the bits that were top rated on Amazon, basically. <laughs> Splodge this on, I guess, and then all I have to do is transfer those, which are now like ready cut and laid out into this little base here. I'm also using a little tile trim. Um, I'll tell you more about this later when I do the other bit. Um, but this has to go down first as well, I think, um, when you're laying the adhesive and then you push the tiles up towards it. And then it's like a nice and neat little brass trim to cover up the edges. And then I think this like lip that I'm gonna have from the laminate is gonna look a bit annoying. So I guess I can just paint that or caulk that or something afterwards. I'm sure I'm not supposed to do that, <laughs> but it'll be fine. Like all DIY in this house, everything will look fine from a distance.
I am checking in with a little update on Project Fireplace. I feel like I could think of a more exciting project name than Project Fireplace. Project Flame Pit. It's actually probably been about a week or so since I last filmed an update on this one. I think last time I filmed a clip for this, I was somewhere in the depths of despair wondering why I'd taken on a project that I knew absolutely nothing about. I was starting to think that perhaps I'd taken on, I'd bitten off a little more than I could chew maybe, um, and I wasn't convinced it was gonna look all that good, but it turns out that a little bit of a, a lick of white paint and filling in all the gaps with a load of white grout uh, really works some miracles. I actually ended up tying in this little tiling project with a brand project that I did over on Instagram. The brief for that was kind of like completing a tricky task, diving first into something really difficult that you've I'm been putting- I'm not sure I understand. I don't understand either. A tricky task that you've been putting off for absolutely ages, um, something like hard and grown up and difficult that feels really overwhelming. Challenge yourself to do it, get it done, and then you can have a delicious ice cream as a reward. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, so this actually tied in really well with the content that I was asked to make for that. And obviously for that, there was a deadline involved. So that was actually really motivating at getting it to this particular point. And I wanted to get it to a point that looked you know, half decent and presentable for that. And now that that's all done and dusted, I can pick it back up, go back at my own pace a little bit again and see how we get on with the final 50% of the job. Please just ignore all the slightly chaotic equipment everywhere. But at the halfway mark, this is how we're looking. This is the point where I got up to that I felt it looked <laughs> semi-presentable enough for my deadline. Um, but now I can crack on and do the top half and the sides as well. Well, I have just spent an extremely sweaty half an hour uh, sawing tile sawing tile trim um, to go around the edge of the fireplace here. I did not get the camera out for that part because it was extremely sweaty and I was getting a little bit stressed. The small detail of this job, which I have neglected to include, is that we're currently going through quite an extreme heat wave in the UK. And these are not prime conditions to be wearing a big baggy t-shirt and thick denim dungarees, but needs must. But after a lot of back and forth and a lot of slightly frustrated grunting, um, I now have my three pieces of tile trim sawn, I was gonna say to perfection, I might be pushing it slightly. Hopefully you'll be able to see here. This is the little bit of trim that I added in. So I now have three more pieces of that. It's done a 45 degree angle up top there so that the pieces can slot together. And then hopefully this should sit nice and flush when I get the adhesive out. This will stick onto the wall just here and cover up the kind of rough edge of the tiles. made some really good progress but I have now done all the bits that are reasonably enjoyable and fun which is the whole tiles sticking those on the walls and I've now left myself with the less fun parts which involve the tile cutter and I've ended up doing one of my least favorite things and I've done all the easy bits and now left all the really hard bits to finish because not that the tile cutting is difficult but it's a little bit stressful because it surprises me every time the tile breaks um, and because of the thickness of the tiles as well I'll show you in a second um, they're a little bit unpredictable on this tile cutter so it's just a little bit tense and it makes my heart beat probably twice as fast as it should do I've literally just got it set up on the coffee table which probably isn't the most professional setup in the world but it's only a small little project and it's not too messy I just bought it off Amazon I didn't do very much research to be honest but it looked pretty heavy duty to me and it's done a probably like 80% good job I would say. These are called Zellige tiles. I think they are like a Moroccan craft. They're all handmade, they're absolutely stunning. Uh, but they are very chunky. I think they're like a 1.2-ish thickness. Um, but every single one is handmade and unique and different. So they have a lot of variation through them, but they're chunky little boys. So if you were gonna use pretty much any other kind of tile, you'd have a lot less thickness than this. So this machine would be absolutely no problem. Is it a machine? A contraption? a tool. Obviously you measure the size that you want to cut your tile to. You slide it in. This is a little uh, like a measurer so you can push this down to the right place so that it can push up against that. And then this thing, so this has like a really sharp point under here somewhere. I'm going to save you the actual sound effect because it's a horrible noise. Um, but you glide this across basically as many times as you can be bothered to do. With thin tiles you'll only need to do it a couple of times. With this, I've been going across and effectively scoring the tile like 
10 plus times to give myself the best chance. And then when it feels like you've scored it enough, when you've got a little bit of a line in there, when it feels like maybe <laughs> you've got enough of a guideline, um, you whack a load of body weight onto it and snap the tile and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> it should be the size that you want it to be. Uh, I would say my success rate is like 70% because the tiles are so thick and this isn't really the right machine for it. I should have something like electric, I think, to be doing this for me. But I was not about to fork out hundreds of pounds for an electric tiler. This is a budget job. We're reusing old tiles. So if this is giving you palpitations and I'm doing this completely wrong, just rest assured, it's absolutely fine. In the cuttings where I'm really lucky, the other side of the tile that I've trimmed off just so happens to fit in one of the other spaces. This was one of those lucky times. So I already have one of these. Let's go for six and a half. Should be about right, I think. I think last time I showed you the grout. <laughs> Last time we talked grout around here, I was using like a tube of it. Um, I naively thought that was gonna be enough and quite obviously it didn't even touch the sides. Been through two of those. I've been through one similar to this, which I then ran out of, um, and this is my latest. <laughs> so I've actually used three different kinds and it's almost like cake mix or, I mean, that looks like delicious ice cream that I would dive headfirst into. It's got like such a satisfying thickness to it. It looks exactly like cake mixture or like a really well whipped chocolate mousse. So I just whack a bit of this lovely stuff on top and bottom. Not really sure how much you're supposed to do, but it's like, a, it's kind of like icing a cake. You know, when you use one of those flat icing tools, never be intimidated by these things because you've probably done something very similar, just a different way in life. Like applying grout adhesive to a tile is exactly the same as icing a cake. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you different. Look at that. There she blows. That was a perfect fit. I'm impressed with that one. As you can see, like through all of them, these are not tiles that you have like a really, really neat uniformness to, as I said, because they're all handmade. There's a lot of variation between them. Like you can see it really clearly with the coloring, but then obviously like the edges quite often don't quite line up. So if you're a real perfectionist, these probably aren't the kind of tiles for you, but if you like lots of character and difference in between them all, then you're gonna love these. Traditionally with these, you don't use little spaces. Um, if I was using more kind of like standard kind of modern tiles, um, I'd have those little spaces to get like really neat uniform finish between them. They're all done. I survived. Next on the list is grout. Give me a G. Give me an R. I don't know how to make a G. So I've got my tub of chocolate mousse. I've got this thing. I don't know what this is called. This is called a rubber grout float. Bet you're glad I told you that, aren't you? I'm not sure what the technical terms are of this, but effectively I'm going to smush the grout in between all the gaps that are lying between the tiles. Once this way to fill it all in from that angle, and then once this way to fill it all in. Oh, there goes a splodge from that angle. So you should get a nice full finish. As I learned the first time around doing this, you have to move quite quickly with it, um, because if you let it set before you wash it off, um, that's not what you want to do and you will effectively have to chisel quite a lot of grout <laughs> off your tiles. <laughs> I may or may not have spent a good four episodes of Buffy chiseling grout off the first time around. Um, so I'm going to crack on with smushing this in place. Day number 9,764 of working on this project. I think we're somewhere around that mark at this point. I love at the beginning of this video as well, I was like, I think this is gonna be a one day project. 
when will I learn? <laughs> I think realistically, if you were really determined, this could be like a couple of days, but I've had to kind of fit it in around work and spread it around all over the place. So it feels like I've been doing this for ages now. Just done the really satisfying part, which I think has actually really pulled this together of peeling off the like sticky back from the tile trim to reveal it all in its shiny, neat, polished glory. And it looks really smart. I'm super happy with it. It's turned out possibly better than I was expecting it to. In fact, a lot better than I was expecting it to. So here we go. Da, 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 da. Here's our new tiled fireplace. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. I feel like it's really upgraded the whole vibe of this space over here. We were considering getting some more alcove shelving kind of to modernize this a bit and built into mirror over this side. And we've actually booked that in for next week now. So I feel like with this whole new shelving setup that we're gonna have and this really nice kind of polished looking fireplace, this room is gonna have a pretty considerable glow up <laughs> in the next few days. A little close up to show you my handiwork there. There you go, I'm super happy with it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm not sure that you were looking to watch me tile my fireplace anytime soon, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And maybe if you've been looking for a little creative project to get stuck into, if you've got some tiles lying around, uh, maybe this could be the one for you. I hope it's been a good reminder to just be delusional enough to be convinced that you can do anything. And sometimes it works out for the best. So for me and the new fireplace, Thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget you can follow me over on Instagram and TikTok and all sorts of other places if you enjoy stuff like this. Uh, books, cozy chats, some occasional very haphazard slapdash DIY. Um, there's various other places that we can hang out together too if you'd be interested in that. Why don't I just say you can follow me over on Instagram if you'd like to. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.